Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin, and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case United States v. Marshall. This case was heard in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in the year 1990. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So this case deals with LSD. LSD is a hallucinogenic drug. Um, was very popularized in the 70s. A lot of people took it at festivals. Now the interesting thing about LSD is that it weighs very little. LSD itself uh, is a very light. Um, you don't need to take a high weight of LSD to feel the effects of LSD. Usually people take doses in the micrograms, which is less than even a milligram. Now, what happened in this case is we had some, some gentlemen um, that were engaged in selling LSD. Um, they had sold some of them in the thousands of doses of LSD. Um, now, Congress had passed a statute that set mandatory minimums for people who were selling drugs um, at certain weights, right? So if you had sold, for example, maybe 10 pounds of heroin, then you have a mandatory minimum of five years. If you had sold maybe 100 ounces of uh, cocaine, then you, you have a mandatory minimum of this many years. So the question before the court in this case um, is, do the carriers of LSD count towards the weight? What I mean by that? Uh, LSD is generally taken in tabs. If you've ever seen the paper that LSD is put on, that is what they're talking about as a carrier in this case. So the carrier is the paper, the paper itself. And what people would generally do with LSD is take this paper and then they would drop LSD onto it. Very small amounts, the LSD would then absorb into the paper. So they call the paper the carrier. Now should the weight of the paper in this case, count towards the overall weight for the mandatory minimum. Does that make sense? So you might have um, 0 0.05 uh, milligrams of LSD that is dripped onto a piece of paper, but that piece of paper itself might weigh one gram. So should we then say it's 1.05 towards the mandatory minimum, or should we just say it's 0 0.05 and not take the weight of the paper or the carrier into account when we're calculating the amount of uh, LSD that these gentlemen have sold. Um, these gentlemen obviously are gonna argue that we, hey, we shouldn't weigh the paper. The paper isn't the LSD. The LSD is the LSD itself, not the paper. Um, and so this case gets appealed up. Um, they were convicted on the mandatory minimums because they had sold above the prohibited weight. Um, and it gets appealed up to the Seventh Circuit. Um, and, and this is a, a very, there's, uh, tension here, um, and, and the tension is between Easterbrook and Posner. Easterbrook writes for the majority, and Easterbrook says that, yes, we are going to take the carrier or the paper into account um, when we are deciding if these people sold enough LSD and weight to satisfy the mandatory minimum, right? Um, he harps on a key phrase in the statute, which is a mixture or substance containing a detectable amount, a mixture or substance. And then he talks about how when the LSD is dropped on the paper, it's actually becoming a mixture with the paper. Um, he talks about how other drugs, you know, similar to LSD being dropped on a carrier, um, are cut. You know, for example, so you know, say someone's selling cocaine and they sell it, they cut it with some other type of white powder. So what someone thinks they're getting one gram of cocaine, they might only get, be getting 0.2 grams of cocaine. They might be getting 0.8 grams of the white powder. But he says in those cases, we treat the two as the same. We just treat it as one gram of a drug because it's a mixture. And so Easterbrook says, you know, the plain text of the statute and understanding that the fibers of the paper absorb the LSD, we need to say that this is a mixture in this case. And so he upholds the mandatory minimum conviction because these gentlemen sold above the weight um, that was required for the mandatory minimum. Now, Posner um, takes a little bit more of a pr pragmatic approach to this. Um, he says that, you know, we shouldn't take that carrier weight into account when we're looking at the weight of what these people sell. And he gives a really vivid example. And that, that vivid example is um, someone who drops, you know, one droplet of LSD, so a very small amount of LSD, into a glass of orange juice and sells that to their friend might reach the mandatory minimum, whereas if someone actually has a bottle of pure LSD, much more LSD, and sells that to a friend, um, they might not be responsible, right? Because 
as long as there's one drop of LSD in a massive you know, mixture or massive glass of orange juice uh, on the majority's holding, they would have to say that, yep, that's a mixture right there. The orange juice, orange juice and the one drop of LSD is a mixture. And so we're going to have to weigh the whole cup of orange juice. So he talks about how this is totally an absurdity. You know, whereas this might make sense with other drugs, it doesn't make sense with LSD. LSD is sold and consumed on the dose. It's not sold and consumed by the weight. So, you know, one hit of LSD or five hits of LSD. And so Posner says, you know, we as a court should, uh, we shouldn't really just take this statute as it's written. You know, certainly it's written this way, but Congress really, it's pretty clear that they didn't know what they were doing when they wrote this statute. Um, and they didn't know how it would apply to LSD. So if they don't understand how LSD works as, as, a, ju or, uh, as a drug, um, should the judiciary really enforce that statute that has a complete lack of understanding, um, a complete lack of, of grounding in how the drug is actually used? It's, it's not calculated upon weight in a mixture. It's calculated upon doses or hits. And so he says that's how the court should treat that. So it's a more pragmatic approach. You could almost say, make an argument that it is an ex-post approach, whereas Easterbrook is an ex-ante approach. And so let's just jump into a, a discussion ex-ante of this case. Judge Easterbrook, um, in, in writing this case, it seems that he doesn't love the result of the statute. It seems that he feels like, yeah, this is totally unjust. Um, but he seems to just respect the legislature. This is the way the legislature wrote it, and so this is the way they must have understood it. Maybe they wanted LSD to be more harshly criminalized than cocaine, um, but that's the way the statute's written. And so although it might do injustice to the parties at hand, um, these guys that had sold, you know, a little bit of LSD, thousands of hits, um, and put in perspective, the, the amount of LSD that these guys sold was not nearly close to the amount of uh, heroin that they would have had to sell to qualify for the same mandatory minimums. Um, but he says, you know what? It's not about justice for the parties at hand here. We need to enforce the law as it's written. Um, he's a very textualist uh, approach to the statute. Um, and if Congress wants to change it, they can change it. Let Congress change the statute, but this is the way it's written right now. Um, whereas Judge Posner says, you know, we really need to look more to the intent of Congress, uh, the intent of the deal uh, when it was struck by the legislature. And we need to try and discern that pragmatically. And how would that apply um, in this instance? Um, and that might look ex post, and there's certainly a good argument that that's ex post, but Posner could probably also argue that that perspective is ex ante um, because people um, generally would expect, and when I'm talking about people, I'm talking about the legislature, um, the statute to be interpreted in a way um, that is understandable, that makes sense. And, and if there's this type of error in the statute that does grave injustice, um, then maybe we need to, as a society, it's more economically effective if judges are able to correct that. Uh, it's more economically effective if they can fix those problems because uh, then we are recognizing the economic deals that were struck by Congress um, at the time they passed the statute. A little bit of an uphill battle to argue that that's ex, ex ante. It is a little bit more ex post, um, but worth thinking about because Posner early on did proclaim himself to be a, a bit more judging from the ex ante uh, textualist perspective. Um, and then later on admitted that he was really more of a pragmatist. But this is a really interesting case. Uh, it's something to think about. Um, you know, a lot of times you think that this, it's easy to say that we should have, uh, you know, a law that is written rigidly, applied rigidly. Um, and then if the Congress wants to change it, they can. But when Congress writes a statute that is so absurd as this one is, you know, is it really maybe the job for the judiciary to step in um, and resolve the grave injustice that's going to be done to these men. You know, they did not sell nearly the amount of LSD that they would have needed to have sold in heroin to get this um, uh, this sentence. And so there's even maybe a constitutional question, um, a Fifth Amendment question, and Posner does hold that as well. He, he argues that this is could run constitutionally a foul as well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.